When I talk about my science, I always have to justify it myself. It's like, why are you studying the genetics of obesity? Is it even genetic? And I always have to point out that like, it's definitely genetic. The debate on who is to blame for the worldwide epidemic of obesity is intense. Many have traditionally claimed that people living with obesity are themselves to blame. They should just exercise more and eat healthier. Ruth Luce has dedicated her career to understanding the biology that underlies body weight regulation. For her efforts, she is receiving the 2023 EASO Novo Nordisk Foundation Obesity Prize for Excellence. When blood pressure is high, when you have hypertension, people don't see that, they don't judge. If you tell them you went to the doctor to get medication, to get treated for hypertension, they think like, yeah, that's a good idea. But when you have obesity and you go to the doctor to get treated, that's all of a sudden not acceptable. As the daughter of two Belgian bakers, Ruth Luce's scientific interest might not have been inherited. But the sheer discipline of working every weekend was a natural part of her upbringing. I uh, got into physical education and most of my colleagues uh, were top athletes really. Um, and we were both doing the same courses, uh, me going one way and, and they going the other way. Uh, I stayed more on the science track. After finishing her studies in kinesiology at Louvain University, one of her mentors said, we have a study running at the, the Department of uh, Human Genetics at uh, the Faculty of Medicine. So why don't you check with them whether they can use you, help them with coordinating this twin study. One of Ruth's jobs was to pick up the twin pairs in a van to go for examination. I drove to their house uh, with a little van, picked them up and then uh, drove back to the center. And you see these identical twins nicely growing at the same rate, whereas these non-identical twins, like one day you pick them up and one is tall, and six months later you pick them up again and the other one is taller. So that's really a, a good introduction for me to, to genetics. After finishing her PhD, Ruth Luce got a grant from the Belgian American Educational Foundation to go and study in the USA. But while she was doing her postdoc at Pennington Biomedical Research Center, a collaborator, Nick Wareham, invited her to come to Cambridge. And Nick Wareham said, you work on the genetics of obesity. Obesity was not as hot a subject as it is today, but animal studies had shown that certain genes have an influence on obesity. We actually cannot easily replicate it in humans. We knew that there was a genetic component, we just couldn't get to it. In the early 2000s, Nick Wareham's group had started doing genome-wide association studies, some of the first in the world. So that actually put me at the forefront. I was at the right place at the right time with the right people. Meanwhile, colleagues were looking for genes associated with type 2 diabetes. Coincidentally, they found one variant through its association with obesity. We look in our data and said, yeah, we find a replication. Uh, so that was uh, my first contribution to their big paper in science. That was sort of the beginning of the whole GWAS era for obesity. With the establishment in 2008 of the International Giant Consortium, led by Joel Hirschhorn, the genetic hunt to identify relevant genetic loci took off. Today, more than 800,000 individuals have been studied and thousands of genetic loci that modulate human body size and shape have been found. Like we find these variants and that's easy, but what do they mean? What's the biology behind it? And that's what we're currently, I would say, struggling with. Um, going from variant to function to biology. As it turns out, not all people living with obesity get comorbidities. Part of my research is now to look whether we can identify subtypes among people with obesity. So the typical subtypes is people with obesity but who do not have cardiometabolic risk factors. My body composition may be very different, my risk of disease may be very different, my trajectory may be very different. The genetic studies show that gaining weight is driven by how the brain controls our hunger, satiety and reward. Whereas the genes for the comorbidities, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, fatty liver disease, are found elsewhere. 
is not in the brain at all. The genes that we find are expressed in adipose tissue. So pointing to the, the importance of the health of the fat cell when it comes to adiposity and comorbidities. Obesity is an important risk factor of cardiometabolic diseases, a bit like hypertension, but... The difference is, is that obesity and body weight is visible. So people have an opinion about your body weight, uh, whereas people have no opinion about your blood pressure. And they think they know how you can lose weight, even though their genetic susceptibility may be high. But for some people, the genetic component is stronger uh, than for other people. But of course, it is not all about the genes. Today, obesity is known to be a multifactorial condition that is caused by the unique interplay between biology and environmental factors. If you live a healthy life, you can attenuate that genetic susceptibility. It's not easy, uh, but it's possible. If they live physically active lifestyle, then that risk can be attenuated by 30 to 40 percent. To predict who should be treated one way and who should be treated another way, or what can be done to prevent the condition, the researchers have now started a huge cohort study at the Nova Nordisk Foundation Center for Basic Metabolic Research in Copenhagen. We just measured their health in enormous detail, including liver scans, eye scans, we do a VO2 max test, and then we send them off for 10 days because we also want to see uh, how they live their lives. Ultimately, we hope to use all that information to predict who's more at risk of developing certain diseases. I'm not doing just science for the science, but definitely to, to help make a difference in one way or another.